The small town of Sitges in Spain, just along the coast from Barcelona, was the venue of the 86th meeting of the 3GPP technical standards groups. The annual plenary of mobile experts was tasked with finalising the details of the next major release of 5G, release 16, whilst also agreeing the scope of the forthcoming release 17. At the end of the week-long event, Telecom TV spoke to the chairs of the 3GPP's three specification groups to find out the status and the future of 5G. We have uh, three main um, specification groups. We have one responsible for everything regarding radio access networks, so defining all the protocol and solution to be able to deploy the radio access network, including the radio access technology. ASA is responsible for providing all the service requirements and functional uh, architecture requirements also uh, to be able to define the end-to-end -end system uh, that we need to support to be able to communicate across the, across the network. So interconnecting the, uh, the uh, radio access networks and also supporting um, interfaces towards the third parties. And uh, City, that is the core network and terminal uh, specification group, is responsible to provide all the solution and protocol uh, that need to be supported in the core network uh, to be able to interconnect. So release 16, we're very close to completion. In fact, the physical layer functionality has been completed just this week. Uh, the physical layer functionality is fo followed by the completion of the relevant protocol functionality, which, gonna, which is going to happen in three months together with the architecture-related uh, functionalities. And then eventually in June next year, we're going to freeze all of these specifications. And in essence, we're going to stop making uh, no non-backwards compatible. We're going to stop making non-backwards compatible changes from June onwards. So. I can speak for CT. So for the time being, we're still confident in the fact that we will complete our work for March. So obviously we may have some exception because we have some requirements coming late and we will need to fulfill this requirement in order to complete the release to provide a complete set of features. So we may have some exception till uh, June, but for the time being, as I said, after this plenary, uh, the assumption is that in March, I would say 90% of the work will be finished, if not uh, 100%. Uh, we're going to see China deploy standalone uh, very soon. Um, over the first half of next year. Um, they have also made a very strong commitment towards standalone 5G through mandating that all the devices that they sell have to be standalone capable from 1st of January onwards. And this will be the second major wave of, of, of potential on the field feedback uh, from, from the standalone functionality. So we are looking forward to seeing how it all works out. We are trying now with SA and Iran to define what would be the content of the next release in release 17. What we can foresee uh, for the time being, it's a lot of new requirements coming from, again, the verticals, new vertical like the satellites. Um, we have uh, fixed, broadband, uh, fixed broadband access also with new requirements. Uh, we have still uh, a lot of requirements uh, for mission critical services. That is uh, an important topic also. So I think it would be part of uh, the next step. And for CT, it will be just to be able to fulfill the requirements that have been first uh, identified by SA. And uh, in RAN and CT, we will try to implement all these requirements for release 17. So this week, a big chunk of our time was spent with defining the work program for release 17 which means uh, scoping out the different enhancements and uh, further additions to our specifications. So for the physical layer folks, um, uh, release 17 can start early next year already in the first quarter of next year. What we try to provide at the 3GP, in 3GPP, it's uh, to a complete set of functionality that can be deployed and used in the network. And we try to keep this notion of release just to ensure that uh, uh, vendors, implementers, operators, third parties will know what to expect for the next for the end of the release and to be able to use uh, the, the production of 3GPP to be able to implement and deliver services. The, the biggest challenge with, with release 17 and with 5G in general is that there are now so many different sort of sub ecosystems to say, so to say that are, are very interested in 5G and we have to give each and every one of these a clear evolution step and new pieces of functionalities in every release. With 5G, of course, the, I would say the center of our focus is to 
uh, evolve the network into a platform that verticals can use so that they are enabled to run their services. First of all, it's a long process. It's a process that we started several years ago where we saw that uh, the network we are providing is actually also valuable for industrial connection and also for other players than just traditional uh, telecommunication companies. So we're also still looking uh, for new people, for new companies, new industries that are joining us. But then some of them are already well on the way, working already several years with us and hopefully seeing some positive results. So in really 17, we're going to do a 5G uh, variation or enhancements to the 5G radio so that it can be used by satellites, both low Earth bit and, and, and geostationary uh, satellites. What I can see is that uh, maybe the next action, uh, maybe not for the next release, but uh, will be to see if we can have um, what we call a, a new user plane. Uh, the one that we have today is based on uh, something that was defined already for 3G, reusing 4G, and uh, maybe the next step for CT would be to have something more, something closer to the implementation. And we are talking about virtualization, we are talking about cloudification, and, uh, and uh, in that sense, uh, when we are defining now solution uh, at the protocol level, you need also to be aware a little bit about the um, uh, software architectures that will be used behind the logical architecture and, uh, and design our solution based on this assumption. 5G is getting closer and closer to really fulfilling the grandiose vision. This is Guy Daniels for Telecom TV at the 3GPP plenary in Sitges, Spain.